uh, I uploaded in all the resources on Teams. I made a folder called Final Exam Resources when I uploaded all the PPTs. And all the worksheets also I uploaded. You may concentrate mainly on the revision sheet, which I uploaded uh, for the uh, grade nine exam. Plus you may go through the other sheets also for your revision, okay? So you have any questions or doubts you may ask me? All clear? <clears throat> yes, it's all clear, thank you. You're most welcome, Robasu. All right, ladies, today we are going to wrap up this topic gas exchange respiration and I'll introduce you to the next topic which is excretory system inshallah. So we only have the subtopic left which is effects of smoking. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so this is chapter 11. I will also uh, summarize as to what all we studied under this topic so that it's a kind of summary for the entire topic. If you have any questions, you can ask me or everything would be uh, uh, like a kind of revision. So let's get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi Nias aloka in manafia. Okay, so let's check whether we can we checked on all these objectives. Uh, why organisms need energy? We studied how respiration provides organisms with energy. Uh, we discussed the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. We discussed about gas exchange in humans in detail as to where it takes place. Uh, we discussed the various parts of the gas exchange system, their structure and functions. Right now, coming on to the core and supplement objectives, we covered all this. Um, we also investigated the effects of physical activity on the rate and depth of breathing. We conducted this experiment, which proves that the exhaled air is carbon dioxide with the help of lime water. Uh, we are yet to do the, uh, 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 the the tobacco smoking can cause chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This we are going to do today, inshallah. So apart from this, uh, the role of goblet cells, the effects of physical activity, all this we covered. Isn't it, ladies? Even in this page, uh, we studied about the balanced chemical equation for aerobic respiration. We studied about the equation of anaerobic respiration. And we described the role of anaerobic respiration and ease during bread making. Uh, all this is covered, alhamdulillah. So let's quickly revise. So we started by uh, by uh, uh, going through what is respiration and how does respiration provide our body with energy with this equation. Glucose plus oxygen, it gives rise to energy or releases energy. And the byproducts which are released during this process are carbon dioxide plus water. Now respiration is very, very important for our body processes. Our cells need energy for various purposes and for various metabolic reactions which take place in our body we need energy and this we get from the air we breathe from the oxygen which we intake now where does this uh, energy production takes place it takes place in the mitochondria where in this reaction takes place and glucose combines with oxygen to produce energy in the form of atp which is used by our body for various activities and body processes so we discussed in detail what is respiration Again, respiration is of two types, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. The respiration which involves oxygen is known as aerobic respiration. Like we all breathe, all the animals which we take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide, all of us are breathing aerobically. So the uh, uh, equation for aerobic respiration, of course, is glucose plus oxygen gives rise to carbon dioxide plus water plus energy, the same thing. So here we have the definition for aerobic respiration. It takes place in the mitochondria and we discussed as to how it happens. Now coming to the anaerobic respiration, it is respiration which takes place in the absence of oxygen or without oxygen. There are many bacteria and yeast which respire anaerobically, which we also use in the food industry a lot. Uh, why? Because they can produce huge amounts of carbon dioxide, which help in making the pizza and the bread very soft and fluffy. Now coming to our muscles, uh, our anaerobic respiration also takes place in our muscles when we are doing vigorous exercise or rapid activity. When our muscles, they need extra energy, then they undergo anaerobic respiration, uh, wherein they want, they break down the glucose in the absence of oxygen and the energy is released. So though the amount of energy which is released during anaerobic respiration is very, very less compared to aerobic, but during that time, even that less is more. 
okay so during this time uh, this reaction takes place the glucose is broken down uh, and lactic acid plus uh, carbon dioxide are produced this is a reaction which produces alcohol and carbon dioxide uh, which is produced by the yeast when we are using yeast in food preparations similarly the the reaction which takes place in our muscles is this one which produces lactic acid plus energy so this lactic acid can be very harmful for our muscles and we need to remove it as early as possible from our body uh, here are the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration and here we discuss as to what happens to our body when it is at rest when we are doing hard exercise and after the hard exercise how do we repay or pay off the oxygen debt which has been produced due to anaerobic respiration uh so we discussed about the oxygen debt with this graph as to how it can be overcome we also discussed about the functions of yeast in bread making and pizza making as to how the yeast produces large amounts of carbon dioxide that is why it is used a lot in the food industry whereas alcohol which is produced during during this process it gets evaporated when we are baking at very high temperatures similarly yeast is also killed when we are baking this bread or pizza at very high temperatures Uh, then we discuss about gas exchange in humans, which of course takes place in our lungs, and we discuss about each and every part of our human breathing system, starting with the nose and mouth, uh, following with the epiglottis, and then taking us into the larynx and trachea. Here we discuss about the goblet cells, the uh, ciliated epithelial cells, which have a function. They function as a physical barriers so that the uh pathogens and bacteria do not enter our lungs because once they enter our lungs the lungs get infected it might lead to serious illnesses and conditions and that is why these physical barriers protect our body now here is the goblet cells they produce the mucus which also serves as the same function in trapping the uh, pathogens also the ciliated cells they are moving from time to time keeping the pathogens away from our body next we discuss about trachea which helps in carrying the oxygen which we breathe in from our nose or mouth and it takes it uh, it divides into two bronchi uh, at the bottom of our uh, what do you say the chest or the uh, thorax and these bronchi bronchi they are further dividing into smaller tubules known as bronchioles and at the end of each bronchiole are many tiny air sacs known as alveoli Now this alveoli is the exact place where in the gas exchange takes place. So the blood capillaries which are surrounding the alveoli like this they uh, leave carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen from the alveoli and this carbon dioxide which is released or diffused over here it is again uh, exhaled out of our body. Clear ladies am i going very fast are you following me? Yes. All clear ladies are you with me? Yes, teacher yes. all clear. Okay, thank you Ravasan. So then we discuss about the gas exchange in the lungs as to how it happens as we we can relate it to the pulmonary and the systemic circuit as we discuss in our circulatory system and in this picture you can see the RBC how they surround the alveoli and they release uh, carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen from here. uh this is the cross section of an alveoli it shows as to how the uh, diffuse carbon dioxide out of the blood uh, the rbc it is uh, exhaled out of of a body again via the bronchioles and the bronchi and the trachea and then we breathe out to the carbon dioxide all right ladies so after that we discussed about the breathing movements uh the <clears throat> falling and rising of the chest it is possible because of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles which are present between the our rib cage so they help in the rising and falling of the chest which these movements are very very important for our lungs to fill in air and then when the air is uh, when the air is removed out of a body by the process of inspiration and expiration So here we studied in inspiration the diaphragm is lowered the rib cage is raised and the lungs are filled with air and in contrary to that when we are exhaling or during expiration the diaphragm it springs up the rib cage is lowered and the volume of the thorax decreases so air is forced out of our lungs so this is what happens during inspiration 
and expiration which is possible only because of our diaphragm and our intercostal muscles okay so here is uh, it is explained clearly in this video again <coughs> Here we discuss the differences between respiration, gas exchange and breathing which is very very important for you to know. You should not get confused and don't think that all three are one and the same. Respiration is when energy is released after a series of processes when oxygen combines with glucose. Whereas gas exchange is we are only talking about the uh, how the oxygen is taken into the body and carbon dioxide is removed. Uh, and breathing is the muscular movements which keep the respiratory surface supplied with oxygen. Uh, here again you can see the composition of the air. The PPD got stuck. Okay, great. Then we uh, conducted these uh, experiments in order to prove that the exhaled air is carbon dioxide. When it reacts with lime water, it, it changes its color to milky white because of the conversion of carbon hydroxide to calcium carbonate. It gives a milky white color, as you can see in the test tubes here. Okay, and then we discussed in the last class about exercise and breathing rate. Again, uh, when we are doing vigorous exercise, when our uh, muscles, they are not provided with immediate oxygen, then the muscles, they respire anaerobically producing lactic acid. And this lactic acid, it, reach, it needs to be removed, how? By uh, inhaling uh, more oxygen in our heart it keeps on beating and we keep on breathing faster even after seven to eight minutes after we stop exercising so during this time we are trying to take in oxygen in order to be off the oxygen debt and we are also breaking down the lactic acid so that it can be removed from our muscles via the liver all right ladies uh, so the faster heart rate also helps to transport the lactic acid as quickly as possible from the muscles to the liver from there it is removed this is known as paying off the oxygen debt clear so far ladies any doubts or questions all clear so far arish fatima rawas and sara khiba Nof, yes, Sidra, Jonah, everything clear so far? Yes, everything's clear. All right, thank you so much. So let's move on and discuss about the effects of smoking, which is the last subtopic from this chapter. Now we all know the smoking is bad, isn't it? Smoking is harmful, smoking is injurious. But what happens when we are smoking or why is it injurious? because uh, the smoking it can lead to many serious diseases like lung disease the first thing it might also lead to coronary heart disease and certain types of cancers why because there is a chemical which is present in the uh, uh, cigarette of course we know that is tobacco and there is nicotine which is present in the tobacco which is an addictive substance addictive meaning once you smoke you want to do it again and again why because this nicotine it quickly reaches your brain and it creates a dependency so that smokers they become addicted you must have had any smokers at your place i'm not sure uh, uh, maybe your parents uh, your father or your uncles your grandparents or anyone who smokes you must have observed that they have to and they want to smoke after every two three hours it depends again whether they are chain smokers they are they want to smoke before the lunch after the lunch before going to the washroom after they uh, uh, after uh, coming out or uh, as a kind of stress reliever they try to use these cigarettes the chain smokers and even before they sleep if they are going to any going through any tense situation they want to smoke so this is how they get it, habituated to it addicted to it so this drug is absorbed readily into the blood the nicotine and it stimulates the nervous system to reduce the diameter of arterioles the arterioles which carry the blood to your heart and the adrenal glands to re release adrenaline Okay, so there are changes which are being brought about in your endocrine system and your nervous system because of this chemical nicotine which is absorbed into the blood. 
So what happens then, this increases your heart rate and the blood pressure, okay? And it decreases the blood supply to the extremities, for example, the hands and the feet. So your body's metabolic activities are getting, getting affected. Your life processes are getting affected because of this nicotine. Your blood pressure is high. Your heart rate is high. So another effect is that the platelets, they become stickier, which can lead to an increased risk of blood clotting. So we know what happens when a clot is formed. Uh, it might ultimately lead to the blocking of the arteries completely, as we discuss about arteriosclerosis and arteriosclerosis, in which uh, ultimately it might lead to a severe blockage, a heart attack or even a brain stroke. So these are the uh, uh, dangerous effects of smoking. The carbon monoxide, it is produced when you're smoking and this gas, it diffuses across the alveoli into the blood and onto the RBC, combining with the hemoglobin, exactly like oxygen combines, forming carboxyhemoglobin. Now this stops the hemoglobin from becoming fully saturated and so it carries five to 10% less oxygen. Okay, so even the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin is reduced. This places a, places a strain on the heart and the heart muscle receives less oxygen and carbon monoxide can damage directly the linings of the artery. So this is how our heart is affected. So smokers, they are more susceptible to heart attacks and cancers and respiratory diseases compared to a non-smoker. As you can see, uh, apart from that, there is tar, which is getting deposited in your lungs. Tar is present in any tobacco product that is burned. Okay, so the black ashes or the black smoke, which is produced when you're smoking, that is tar. Tar is the name given to the large number of different chemicals, which are found in cigarette smoke when you're burning the cigarette, when the smoke is being produced. Now, what happens to this tar? The tar in cigarette smoke, it condenses in the airways and alveoli. It paralyzes the cilia in the lungs, you know, and it contributes to lung diseases such as emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and even lung cancer. So the first organ which gets affected due to the smoking is your lungs. Uh, you must have seen those experiments which are carried out, how the smokers' lungs look like. They are extremely black because of the tar which is deposited in the lungs of the smokers. Let me show you. There is also an activity which you can do about it. Okay, so here you can see the difference. Have you, oh, oh my God. Have you seen the smokers' lungs, how they look like? So this target keeps on depositing in their lungs. So this is a normal lung, a picture of our healthy lung, and this is a smoker's lung. Do you see this? Have you seen this? Do you still, uh, uh, can you, can you see this? Oh my God. This is how it happens. And ultimately the lungs, they are lined with this tar, which is the chemical which is present in the cigarettes. And it might lead to various conditions like cancer, like lung diseases, and they are more vulnerable. For example, during this pandemic time, the smokers are more vulnerable to the uh, Corona COVID-19 infection compared to a healthy person because their lungs are already infected. Have you seen? Disgusting. All right. So this is how the smoker's lungs, they look like with the tar getting deposited. So cigarette tar is poisonous and carcinogenic. Carcinogenic meaning it can lead to cancer and is present wherever there is tobacco smoke. So not only the smokers themselves, but in the presence of the smokers, if you are inhaling the same smoke, even you will get affected. So it's better if the smokers, they are addicted, then they need to go out of the house and smoke, uh, especially when they are around children or pregnant women or uh, the elderly people with any medical condition, it could be very harmful to them. So they need to smoke in the outside air. Now, related to the heart disease, how does it lead to heart disease smoking is the nicotine and the carbon monoxide from cigarettes smoke, it increases the tendency for the blood to clot. So this clot, what does it do? It blocks the coronary arteries, the arteries which supply the heart with the blood. 
So carbon monoxide, it increases the rate at which the fatty material is deposited in the arteries. The patients who smoke, they have a higher blood pressure than normal due to the stimulant effects of the nicotine. So blood pressure is high. This, this might lead to the clotting of the uh, uh, coronary arteries, which ultimately might lead to coronary heart disease. So a high blood pressure makes the early damage to the arterial lining more likely as well as making the blood more likely to clot, which results in the coronary heart disease. Got it, ladies? So the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, this is again different from coronary heart disease, ladies. Pulmonary meaning this is related to your lungs. What is it known as? COPD. It is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a lung disease common to the smokers. How does it happen? The disease usually causes coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath, making it difficult to breathe. Okay, so there is a breathing problem here because your lungs are affected. Smoking damages the air sacs, the airways, and the lining of the lungs. The lungs, airways, and the air sacs, they lose their elasticity and they have trouble moving enough air in and out. So it's hard to breathe. Got it, ladies? So the breathing itself gets obstructed. There is shortness of breath. Uh, there's not enough oxygen which can be taken in because your air sacs, the airways and the linings of the lens, all of them have been damaged. And emphysema, it occurs when cigarette smoke damages the walls between your air sacs over time. Okay. Uh, and chronic bronchitis occurs when the airways become inflamed and produce a lot of mucus. So these goblet cells, they produce a lot of mucus during this time which causes chronic bronchitis in which all your lungs are infected and you cough from time to time taking out the mucus from your lungs. So both of these emphysema and chronic bronchitis together are known as COPD which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which is a serious condition of the lungs. You can see it is the last condition uh, which is very very critical wherein the person can't even breathe and it might lead also to death. Okay, so here you can see how the bronchitis looks like, ladies. Uh, yeah, so here you can see these are the uh, bronchial tubes, the bronchioles which are present in your lungs. The bronchi is divided into bronchioles. And this is the mucus blocking the bronchioles like this in bronchitis, the chronic bronchitis. So the oxygen, it cannot pass through the lungs, neither the carbon dioxide can be taken out. So this is how a normal bronchial tube looks like and this is how an infected bronchial tube looks like with thick mucus and it also inflamed lining of the bronchial tube due to which the breathing becomes very very difficult and you can imagine if a person cannot breathe obviously he cannot survive. And here are the alveoli which are infected in the emphysema. This is how the normal alveoli look like. And these are the infected alveoli in which most of the air sacs are damaged. They cannot carry out the function of taking in oxygen and, uh, and diffusing of carbon dioxide cannot happen when the alveoli are damaged. And such a condition is known as emphysema. Clear ladies, any doubts or questions about emphysema, COPD, uh, uh, the chronic bronchitis, the coronary heart disease, and the deposition of tar. Is everything clear? Yes, yes. Any doubts or questions? Uh, okay, Arish Fatima says, yes, Ms. Clear. Yes, ladies, everything clear from this topic? Ariba, Dua Mustafa, Ghadir, Hiba, Mariam, Nada, North, Nuralia, all clear, my dears. Tala Mansur, Tala Walid, Sarah. Yes, yes teacher, teacher, all, all clear. clear. All right, thank you so much, my dears. I believe last time itself I assigned you the homework, which is to complete the end of the chapter questions. Uh, so the ones uh, who didn't submit it to me so far may please do it over the weekend or whenever you're free, please uh, submit the end of the chapter questions. Uh, so with this we are, thank, thank you Vadir, Arish Fatima, okay. So we are done with chapter 11 ladies, gas exchange and respiration. So shall we start the new topic after this which is excretory system. 
Any doubts or questions you want to ask me? So this is your assignment, ladies. I believe I sent you the picture of this. Complete all the end of the chapter questions. All right then. Let me tell you the page number after this. We have about 15 minutes left. Yeah. So after chapter 11, we have chapter 12, which is excretion. So please open page number 153 from your textbooks. 153. And give me a moment while I pull out the PPT for excretion. Excretory system. Right, ladies. So under this topic, you are going to study about the excretory products which are removed from our body during the excretory the excretion. And we are going to study about the nitrogenous waste, which is ammonia, which is removed out of your body. And also we will discuss about the human excretory system in detail, inshallah. Okay, so let's start. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, let me discuss the objectives first. Give me a moment. Yeah. So we are on page number 153, ladies. The objectives for the topic today would be to discuss about uh, the excretory products that are formed in the body. Okay. Now, let me introduce you to the topic. Uh, We'll discuss about the bird droppings first. <laughs> if you can see in this picture uh, on your page number 153, there is a bird and the baby birds that produce their semi-solid waste in little packages, making it easy for the parents to tidy up the nest. <laughs> Are you aware of it? Even the birds, they tidy up their nest. And in order to make it a uh, mess, uh, little less messy, and easy for the parent birds to clean up the, uh, the nest. The baby birds, what do they do? They uh, uh, produce these droppings in the form of small packages so that the mother bird it can uh, remove it from time to time when she is cleaning the nest. Okay. Oh, a few birds are really messy, isn't it? But we are talking about the birds which are really clean maybe in this picture like this. Okay, now, it's probable that at some time in your life, a bird dropping has landed on you. Did it happen any time, ladies? <laughs> I've seen a lot on our cars, uh, but not on me, definitely. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about you. So, you may not realize that white bird droppings are actually their urine. Okay, so when you see this colored droppings over here, this white color is the urine and the dark color is, of course, the feces. Now I know it. Okay, so not feces and the birds, they excrete urine in semi-solid form rather than liquid as we do. Okay, so you can ask me why is it like a toothpaste liquid, but yeah, they remove the urine from their bodies in the form of the semi-solid white paste like this. And uh, the black thing, of course, it is the feces. Now think about how young birds develop. They grow inside a shelled egg, because all of them, they are amniots. And if they produce liquid urine, the egg would quickly become filled with it. Instead, they produce a concentrated paste-like urine, which collects into one small area of the egg where it is kept away from the growing bird. And if you are ever able to watch a chick hatch from an egg, <coughs> look for this little package of waste material that is left behind inside the eggshell. 
the sack is in which it is stored is called the elanthois so if we uh, i i'm not sure whether we studied about this in grade 9 and i'm not sure you're aware of it there are various layers in an amniotic egg okay the layers which provide the egg not only with nutrition and they also help in the gas exchange but they also help in collecting the waste okay so this uh, is an amniotic egg ladies and this elanthois is what we are talking about here is the waste material collected in one corner and this is the growing embryo it derives its nutrition from the yolk sac you know when we are eating an omelet when we break the egg the yellow part it is the yolk which actually provides the nutrition for the growing embryo and we are eating it relishing it isn't it uh, similarly the other membranes which are present are the amnion it uh, Uh, helps in the gas exchange uh, i'm sorry it helps in protection uh, by giving it the protection to the entire egg against the uh, uh, any blows any pressure blows or it protects the growing fetus inside from any uh, 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 from the outside uh, temperature while maintaining or regulating the temperature and also it cushions the growing embryo from uh, against any blow and this chorion it is another layer which helps the egg and gas exchange okay so these are the various layers present in the egg and during the growing stage the bird it it, it uh, uh, removes the waste from its body in the form of the waste which is collected in one corner or in one membrane known as elanthois uh, similarly the reptiles whose young also develop inside shelled eggs also produce semi solid urine in the same way as birds Uh, so another advantage of excreting semi solid urine is that it wastes less water which could be an advantage for adult birds that live in dry places so you know the birds they don't drink water as much as we do and if they are producing the urine in the form of the semi solid waste it's good for them because they are not removing any water uh meaning they are not losing water a lot but they are removing the space in the form of a semi solid uh, paste uh, so that especially the birds which are living in dry areas like uh, like here uh the most of the pigeons that you see here and the eagles and all uh due to, to come back to the heat and to preserve or retain most of the water they remove this semi solid paste okay uh yeah however the body has to use more energy to make the semi solid urine than it does to make liquid urine like us so clearly the advantages for birds and reptiles outweigh this disadvantage as they have been living successfully on earth for more than 300 million years so fossil dinosaur eggs show that they stored their waste in the same way that birds do today because we all know today's birds and reptiles are have uh, are the products of evolution from yesterday's dinosaurs all of them they belong to the amniote family amniotes are basically all the types of organisms whose egg uh, whose embryo develops inside an egg like a hard shell egg like this or a rubbery shell but they develop inside an egg even we are amniotes but our uh, fetus it develops inside the womb inside the uterus but still we can compare it to an egg because similarly like the fetus or embryo is growing in an egg like this our fetus also grows in the uterus of the mother and via the placenta the nutrition is carried to the growing embryo all right ladies so let's start if we have time we have 4 minutes left any doubts or questions so far ladies okay now so what is the definition of excretion can someone read out from the slide here rawasan ladies can you hear me Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. Would you like to read out the definition from the slide here for excretion? Can you view my screen? Is my, Is voice, my voice audible? audible? Yeah, it's audible. Yeah. 
The process that collects and removes harmful or useful substances that form in the body or are taken into the body from the blood, tissues, and cells. Perfect. So this excretion, its meaning is, thank you, Ramasan, removing the cellular waste from our body. The waste which has been produced as a result of various metabolic activities from each and every cell. And also the waste which is deposited, uh, which is uh, remained after we take up or absorb all the nutrients and the water from the body. The waste which is collected in our rectum and removed from, the, from our anus. Okay, so we can say this excretion is a process that collects and removes harmful or useful substances that form in the body or are taken into the body from the blood, the tissues and the cells. And what is our excretory system? We all, we all know uh, that although the urinary system has a major role in excretion, other organs also contribute to the excretory function. So we are not only talking about the our kidneys and our excretory system, we are also talking about the removal of various metabolic wastes as a result of metabolism in our body from various cells and tissues. We are not only talking about feces and urine, we are talking about sweat, which is re removed from our body from our skin. Uh, similarly, the carbon dioxide, which is exhaled out of our body, that is also a waste. And uh, the various uh, waste materials which are produced by our liver and of course kidneys, which produce urine, etc. So we are talking about all these metabolic waste collectively under the excretory system. So as soon as I say excretory system, that one thing which comes to your mind is your kidneys, isn't it? The kidneys which are filtering the water from your body and removing it from your ureter uh, uh, by filling your urinary bladder, isn't it? And if you're talking about the feces, uh, again, after the process of digestion, the waste material, they are corrected in the rectum and removed from the anus. So we'll discuss about the various aspects of the uh, excretory system in our next class, starting with 12.1 excretory products, ladies. The time is up now. Uh, you may ask me if you have any doubts or questions. All clear so far? All right, then the attendance yes, is nine in attendance. Okay, thank you, Ravasan. Uh, all right, ladies, have a wonderful day ahead and take very good care of yourselves until we meet next time, inshallah. Take care. Bye-bye.